Hello, thank you so much for tuning into my YouTube channel. Today's video is going to be a tutorial on a basic hyperspectral image classification in Python. I have already covered this topic in MATLAB, but in this video I want to be focused on Python. Let's get started. As I said in this video, I want to talk about a basic hyperspectral image classification in Python. I have already talked about this topic in one of the former videos. In that video, I performed hyperspectral image classification in MATLAB, but here I'm gonna do it in Python. Let's first touch on some concepts. Hyperspectral imaging measures the spatial and spectral characteristics of an object by imaging it at different wavelengths. In a hyperspectral image, the intensity values recorded at each pixel specify the spectral characteristics of the region that the pixel belongs to. The region can be a homogeneous surface or a heterogeneous surface. The pixels that belong to a homogeneous surface are known as pure pixels. These pure pixels constitute the end members of the hyperspectral data. Heterogeneous surfaces are a combination of two or more distinct homogeneous surfaces. The pixels belonging to heterogeneous surfaces are known as mixed pixels. The spectral signature of a mixed pixel is a combination of two or more end members' signatures. Spectral unmixing is the process of decomposing the spectral signatures of mixed pixels into their constituent end members. The spectral unmixing process involves two steps. First is end member extraction and second is abundance map estimation. The spectra of the end members are prominent features in the hyperspectral data and can be used for efficient spectral unmixing, segmentation and classification of hyperspectral images. Given the end member signatures, it is useful to estimate the fractional amount of each end member present in each pixel. We can generate the abundance maps for each end member which represent the distribution of end member spectra in the image. You can label a pixel as belonging to an end member spectrum by comparing all of the abundance map values obtained for that pixel. Interpreting the pixel spectra by performing spectral matching is how the classification process is done in hyperspectral images. Spectral matching identifies the class of an end member material by comparing its spectra with one or more reference spectra. The reference data consists of pure spectral signatures of materials which are available as spectral libraries. The spectral libraries could be found online or just through someone who knows the pure spectral reflectance available in the data. I'm gonna use two basic methods to perform the hyperspectral image classification in Python. One is based on k-means algorithm which is an unsupervised method and the other is based on maximum abundance classification, MAC. The k-means algorithm takes an iterative approach to generating clusters. The parameter k specifies the desired number of clusters to generate. The algorithm begins with an initial set of cluster centers. Each pixel in the image is then assigned to the nearest cluster center using distance in n-dimensional space as the distance metric and each cluster center is then recomputed as the centroid of all pixels assigned to the cluster. This process repeats until the desired stopping criterion is reached, like the maximum number of iterations. The centroids are like the end members in the hyperspectral image. The second method to classify the hyperspectral image is maximum abundance classification, or MAC. An abundance map characterizes the distribution of an end member across a hyperspectral image. Each pixel in the image is either a pure pixel or a mixed pixel. The set of abundance values obtained for each pixel represents the percentage of each end member present in that pixel. In this example, I will classify the pixels in a hyperspectral image by finding the maximum abundance values for each pixel and assigning it to the associated end member class. In other words, the spectral reflectances present in the hyperspectral image are assigned to one of the end members classes according to how similar they are to them. So as you can see, the end members should be located before the classification process starts. Because the end members specify the classes into which the hyperspectral image is going to be classified. There are different methods that one could use to specify the end members in a particular hyperspectral image, which is a topic for a separate video, and I'm not going to cover that now. The simplest way to find end members is to choose the pure pixels visually and assign them as end members. This is not the most scientific method to choose the end members, but it is not the most inaccurate way either. These seven points that you observe have already been chosen and saved as end members. Let's go to Python and perform these two methods there. So this is the first method in which I'm going to use k-means. I'm going to import the spectral library and numpy. And I'm going to use this to import the k-means. And then the rest of the libraries that I need. This is where my image is located. 
and I'm going to read in the header and the data file and then I'm going to use the spectral library to read and save the hyperspectral data as a NumPy array and this is the k-means with 7 centroids and 30 iterations the centroids can be regarded as n members as I said before and then I'm going to be saving the cluster labels and then I'm going to assign a random color to each label and then I'm going to build a segmented image this segmented image has an RGB format, in other words it has three channels but it has the same width and height as the hyperspectral image and then we go into this loop to make the segmented image we first get each label and then we assign the color associated with that label to the segmented image as you can see here and this is where I'm going to show the results let's run it and see the results so as you can see it's going through 30 iterations so the run is complete, you can see the result of the classification. We chose seven N members and these are the classes associated with those N members. And this is the original image. And this is the result of the classification using k-means. Let's go see the second method in which we use maximum abundance classification. We're going to use the spectral library to read in the hyperspectral image. And then we're going to convert it into double. Then I need the dimension of the image. Then I'm going to choose the pure pixels visually and assign them as my end members. I already know where they are located, so this is their coordinates. And then I'm going to be extracting the signatures and assign them as my end members, as I said. I'm not going to consider the last band in my hyperspectral data because it has NAND values. So you might not have to do this with your image and you just have to skip this. And then I'm going to be creating a new hypercube here. The dimension is now 151, not 152, because I'm not considering the last band, as I said here. And then I'm going to be reshaping the hypercube. And then I'm going to estimate the abundance using this squares method. These are the class names from class 1 to class 7, because I have identified 7 N members. And then this is where I calculate the maximum abundance. And then this is where I plot the abundance map. And this is for the legend of the plot. Let's run it and see the result, and we could also compare it with the first method. So the run is complete, and it was much faster than the first method here. And this is the result of the classification for the seven N members that I chose visually. And this is the k-means. And that's about it. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it and you were able to get something out of it. If you liked it, I would appreciate it if you could subscribe to my channel and also share the video with your friends. Thank you so much and have a nice day.